do we feel no sense of relief in today's uncertainties? Sailing across the stormy seas, it seems we are alone. But you who calm the storm will keep you safe from harm. Your hiding place, mighty God, who saves us from our fears. All these years you have been faithful. I cannot forget one time, I asked a brother during our casual conversation. I asked him, how will you know the Holy Spirit is working in you? You know, he simply said, well, when you are in a situation, when you are trying to do something, and you know it's wrong, then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, as if someone whispers to you, telling you not to do it, that's the Holy Spirit working in you. Hi, I'm Brother Peter De La Cruz, serving in East A Sector of Metro Manila. And good evening to all the members of Metro Manila Mission Corps watching online, and probably our brothers and sisters from different provinces, and probably from different parts of the world watching us as well. Welcome once again to our virtual Mission Corps teaching night, gathered by the Lord as one community of couples for Christ. You know, brothers and sisters, the Holy Spirit I mentioned earlier is the same Holy Spirit working in me and working in us all the time. 
leading us to our faith journey. The same Holy Spirit promised by Jesus to his disciples 2,000 years ago to be their advocate, who gave them the courage, the wisdom, the power to proclaim God's goodness with zeal and boldness. The same Holy Spirit leading all of us to our journey to holiness, serving Him with zeal and passion. Who we are, where we are, and whatever we have right now, He is responsible for that. Establishing that deeper and deeper relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. And He is still working in us, brothers and sisters, because God is not yet finished with us until we become the person he wants us to be to let his will to let his plan be done in us because we are his children whom he loves so much with that brothers and sisters let us prepare our hearts our minds our spirit and feel the warm and holy presence of god as we prepare to sing to dance and raise our hands to give praise and glory to his most holy name in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen let us all praise and worship him we praise you O god we worship you bless your name O lord exalt your name on high O god we praise you you're the king of kings and lord of lords O god we praise you bless your name O god we exalt your name O god we praise you hallelujah 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 <laughs> Thank you. 
thankful for you are bountiful. I am thankful for your kindness, Lord. I am thankful for you are bountiful. You have captured me today, Jesus. You completed all my
take my place of mister And I grow me to show what I'm really worth It took it all and paid a price to set me free My God, you did it all for me So if I fail to bring you praise Heart of mine, I lay it all. I lay this life, and I pray, Lord, that it's Your will, not mine. Who's everything that You are to me? It's everything I hope for. Your grace keeps me still to face the storm. Lord, please have Your way. Lord.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We praise you. We glorify your name, God. Exalt your name, God. Jesus. Hallelujah. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for this online gathering. And tonight, please allow us to know your ways as the Holy Spirit leads us, as we watch and listen to our speaker, whom you sent to proclaim your powerful words. May your most holy name be glorified. And our glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Once again, good evening everyone. Sit down and relax at the comfort of your homes, watching us via FB Live and YouTube. Tonight, we are privileged and honored to have with us our Bishop all the way from Diocese of LA, Los Angeles. Well, I'm also from LA, Lower Antipolo nga lang. He is here to help us know more how the Holy Spirit works in us to a talk entitled filled with the holy spirit brothers and sisters let us all welcome the auxiliary bishop of los angeles california bishop alex aklan warm greetings to all of you today uh, it's wonderful to be here uh, with you uh, to um, uh, reflect a little bit on uh, the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives and uh, what we can do to respond to Him. Ay, pasensya na ko kayo kung English na ako salita at medyo kulang-kulang na ang aking Tagalog. Eh, sabi ko nga dito sa nag-record nito, ang alam kong Tagalog yung Tagalog na pangkanto na ginamit ko nung dumalaki ako sa Pilipinas. But uh, I am Bishop Alex Aklan and I'm one of the five regional bishops uh, of the Arts Diocese of Los Angeles, and uh, my responsibility is here uh, in the region of San Fernando, where some of you, I'm sure, are, are familiar. This is the place where we have a few uh, movie studios, including uh, Disney Studios and Warner Brothers. Uh, and once again, I just want to express to you my uh, pleasure and pri privilege uh, to be with you uh, this morning. The topic of the, the talk that I was asked to uh, lead the reflection on uh, this morning is filled with the Holy Spirit, something that all of us who are baptized need to grow in appreciation of, uh, since it is really, uh, it seems it is a reality that became true for us when we receive new life in the Holy Spirit at the moment of our baptism. Uh, as Catholics, we do believe that we were born again on the day of our baptism, and that on that day, we received the Holy Spirit, not in its fullness, the fullness of the Holy Spirit, uh, grows uh, in us and becomes ours, you know, over time, uh, especially uh, for us Catholics, as a result of receiving uh, the sacraments of confirmation and, and Holy Communion of God. Uh, and we become members of the family of God and therefore uh, heirs to the kingdom of heaven. Now, it is important for us to uh, notice, acknowledge, and celebrate the Holy Spirit within us and all around us. Uh, the Holy Spirit is, an act, is the active presence of God in our lives, in our midst, in the here and now. Uh, at the time of creation, God the Father was the one who was active, uh, who was the active uh, form of God. Uh, and, then, and then after, after uh, God the Father created uh, everything, of course, uh, things uh, uh, progressed and proceeded. And then at a certain point, we needed salvation. And Jesus came into the world uh, to uh, bring us salvation and to take us back uh, to God. Uh, but at this time, we give worship and praise to God and the Holy Spirit to whom we turn for direction and guidance. Uh, as far as, as uh, we, we understand, uh, the active presence of God right now is the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the one that gives us direction and guidance, wisdom and strength as we try to live our, li to live our lives here on earth. Uh, as we await our heavenly reward. Now, uh, the title, of, like I said, of, of this talk is filled with the Holy Spirit. And so what does it mean to be filled with the Holy Spirit? And how does that happen? Well, uh, the, the key uh, uh, to rightly living the Christian life 
is to be under the control of the Holy Spirit, especially for us, uh, like I said, who see the Holy Spirit now uh, in our lives as the active presence uh, of God in the here and the now. Uh, in, in Ephesians uh, uh, chapter 4, uh, we are to, I, 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 we, it said that we are worthy of the calling with which you have been called, the calling of the Holy Spirit uh, for us to live lives of humility, love, unity, light, and wisdom. Um, the life of God and the soul of a human being is the only one uh, that anyone can live, that's the only way I should say that anyone can live a, a righteous life. To walk without the Holy Spirit is like walking uh, without, without wisdom, walking without uh, the equipment uh, and the tools that we need to be able to live a, a fruitful and effective life uh, here, here on earth. Now, uh, the, the uh, uh, theme of today, uh, filled with the Holy Spirit, we actually uh, see uh, a reference to in, in Scripture in, in the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians, uh, it's chapter 5, verse 18. Uh, where um, St. Paul uh, says, be filled with the, with the Holy Spirit, be filled with the Holy Spirit. And that, of course, is an exhortation to every single one of us who now uh, baptize Christians who are now trying to live uh, worthy lives uh, here on this earth. Now, to begin with, uh, many Christians are, are uh, have misunderstood, misapplied, or, or uh, just didn't get uh, what this uh, particular exhortation from St. Paul uh, means. Uh, let me read to you uh, the, the, uh, uh, the, the passage from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians uh, that talks about uh, by, uh, being, being filled uh, with the Holy Spirit. Uh, it's like I said, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18. And so St. Paul says, Do not get drunk on wine, in which lies debauchery, but be filled with the Holy Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and playing to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks always and for everything in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to God the Father. Now, uh, that, that's a very, very uh, a powerful uh, passage from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Uh, not just in, in the way that's exhorting us on how to live our lives, but in, in us realizing constantly uh, that we are people who are gifted uh, and, and God is the one who fills us uh, with the Holy Spirit so we can do what we need to do here on this earth. Now, for, for us baptized Christians, uh, baptized Catholics, I should say, uh, it, it, it really, uh, uh, being filled with the Holy Spirit is, uh, not really getting something that we don't already have. Because in baptism, like I told you, we receive uh, the Holy Spirit. Uh, uh, not in its fullness yet. Like I said, that fullness is going to come as we receive the other sacrament. Uh, but the Holy Spirit is, is, uh, is, is uh, God whom we are able to possess at the time of our baptism. Now, uh, the, the, uh, the Holy Spirit is the one who animates and vivifies us, enables us to live our lives as God wants us to live our lives and as our Lord Jesus Christ has shown us how to live our lives as good followers uh, of His. Now, uh, the, the, the right understanding of, of uh, being filled uh, is, is uh, that God is the one who fills us with the Holy Spirit. Uh, it's, and so it's not so much our effort uh, to try and get the Holy Spirit uh, to become part of our lives and to fill us uh, with His power and His grace. It's, uh, but rather that God is the one who's giving us the Holy Spirit, who's filling us uh, with the Holy Spirit and the power and the abilities uh, that the, only the Holy Spirit is able, is able to give us. And so uh, in, that, in that regard, like I said, we are very blessed. We are recipients uh, of a gift that God wants to constantly uh, to constantly uh, give us. And, and so for us Catholics especially, as uh, many of you probably have, have uh, figured out, uh, being in the Holy Spirit or, or being filled uh, with, the, with the Holy Spirit is not a one-time event. Uh, we receive the Holy Spirit at baptism, uh, but then we are able to, to uh, get more and more and more of the Holy Spirit 
as we receive the sacraments, as we continue to do uh, good things uh, here on earth, and as we uh, I, I continue to receive the many, many graces that God sends us in our life, uh, during, in our life while, while, while we are here uh, on this earth. You know, if I, I remember when I was uh, uh, in, in, in school in the Philippines, uh, of course, I, I grew up in the Philippines, you know, I attended elementary school and high school and college in the Philippines and I worked there for uh, many years uh, until we immigrated here uh, to the States. Uh, but I remember uh, all throughout my, my uh, time in school where I was studying religion, uh, grace was always described to us as being given to us by God in, in, in amounts that we are able to receive. Uh, you know, some of us are like little teacups. Uh, and and uh, some of us are like big vessels already. Uh, and God uh, always is happy to fill us up, you know, uh, in, in, in the way that we deserve to be filled up uh, with the Holy Spirit. If our ability to receive the Holy Spirit is only that uh, uh, of, of a teacup, then the teacup is full. But at the same time, uh, the teacup only holds a small amount of, of, of the Holy Spirit. But, you know, when you're already a vessel that has uh, a bigger ability uh, or, or yeah, a greater ability to receive the Holy Spirit, God will fill us up. And so there's a lot more Holy Spirit. But, you know, uh, the, the, the big receptacle uh, is not, uh, I, I, or the little receptacle, I should, I should say, is just as full as, as the big uh, receptacle, except the quantity is different. And so the fullness of the Holy, the Holy Spirit is something uh, that we receive uh, uh, in, in, in out, of, uh, out of God's generosity in our lives. Like I said, uh, one of the ways uh, that we as Catholics are able to receive it is through, through the sacraments. Um, the, the, especially the sacrament of, of Holy Communion, when we receive the sacrament of Holy Communion worthily, and uh, we are able to, to, uh, to uh, open ourselves up uh, to the grace of God, then we are filled uh, with, the Holy, with, with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is continuous, continuously uh, filling us uh, as, as uh, the Holy, that is the desire of the Holy Spirit, uh, and He is continu continuously uh, filling us in the way that we want to and are able uh, to receive him. Now, uh, how, uh, how is this filling up uh, with the Holy Spirit and the, and the gift of the Holy Spirit uh, achieved uh, in, 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 in us? Um, uh, maybe we can, we can think of, of the filling up of the Holy Spirit based on, on uh, uh, the scripture that I, I quoted to you earlier, uh, Ephesians chapter uh, chapter five, uh, verses eighteen and following, we can think of of the filling of uh, the Holy Spirit uh, in in over the way that we are being filled uh, by the Holy Spirit in in, in three ways. Okay, uh, where where there's some kind of like pressure, okay, uh, being being put upon us uh, to receive the Holy Spirit, and we can think of it. In terms of uh, us, uh, our own core being and our whole lives being permeated, and then we can think of it also as uh, something that dominates us or controls or controls us uh, or controls us. You know, in, in in the case of thinking of it in terms of pressure that's just uh, pressing pressing upon us, you know, you can think uh, in terms of. Uh, you know, the wind just pressing against uh, the sail of a sailboat and that pressure uh, moving the sailboat uh, in a particular direction. So we can think of the Holy Spirit uh, as, uh, as something like that. You know, uh, and, and uh, once uh, we are in, under the power of the Holy Spirit and we are allowing the Holy Spirit to just uh, do whatever it is able to do in our lives, we will just uh, feel the Holy Spirit just carrying us, carrying us uh, in the proper direction. Now, the second way that we could think of it, like I said, is like we are being permeated uh, by the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit, uh, uh, like the Holy Spirit filling every uh, nook and cranny of our beings, you know, every space uh, in our lives. Uh, and, and I'm sure uh, many of you are familiar with, you know, some of these effervescent pills uh, that are available that, uh, in multivitamin pills like 
airborne. This is not an advertisement, okay? <laughs> but I, I use airborne quite a bit. Uh, it's a multivitamin uh, a pill, but the way the way you you, you use it is you you dissolve uh, a, a a tablet uh, in in water, and you can just see bubbles come out as soon as the as the pill hits the water, and then uh, the the pill just permeates uh, everything uh, that is in the glass that that has that has uh, liquid liquid in it. You know, and, and we can think of the Holy Spirit filling us uh, up uh, in, in that way. God wants uh, uh, the Holy Spirit, or the Holy Spirit wants to permeate, to permeate every single nook and cranny, like I said, uh, of our lives. And then uh, the the uh, the, the uh, another way uh, that we can think of of uh, the Holy Spirit filling us is uh, uh, in a way that uh, uh, there is control. Uh, in, in in domination in how we live our lives in how we think uh, and in how in how uh, we act you know uh, the the uh, and 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 many people uh, uh, it, it the way that this is manifested in them and uh, which they have uh, 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 testified to and kind of like described and they say you know they have this uh, overwhelming uh, feeling uh, that uh, that uh, they are being moved uh, into something uh, that uh, in this particular case, because I'm talking about the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit is trying is trying uh, to direct them uh, to do uh, in their lives. So uh, those those uh, three manners uh, we can we can think of uh, as as the way that the Holy Spirit is trying to exert uh, influence on us. Like I said, you know. Uh, the pressure uh, trying to move us in direction, permeation where we feel the Holy Spirit all around us, and then just control us being moved uh, towards a particular di direction uh, as, as a result of God's will, uh, uh, I, I uh, wanting uh, itself uh, to be to, to manifest uh, in our lives. Now, uh, it being uh, 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 filled uh, with the Holy Spirit uh, means being pressured and dominated and permeated uh, uh, in our lives. Uh, what can we expect uh, uh, as a result uh, in our lives uh, when the Holy Spirit finally uh, makes its presence and power uh, really evident uh, in, in your life uh, and in mine? Now, let's uh, go uh, one more time to the to the passage uh, that I shared with you earlier. You know, this is Ephesians chapter five, uh, uh, verses eighteen uh, to twenty. And uh, let me repeat those words again: uh, Do not get drunk on wine, in which is, in which lies in which lies debauchery, but be filled with the Holy Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and playing to the Lord in your hearts giving thanks always and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ uh, to God the Father. Now, so in, 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 uh, uh, from these uh, passages, uh, we can actually uh, I, I draw uh, I, I, some, some, uh, some elements uh, that we can uh, try and figure out how they apply in our lives or how they are actually showing up uh, in our lives, uh, which is the manifestation of the Holy Spirit's power uh, being, being operative uh, in our lives uh, already. Now, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the, the passage that says, you know, uh, be filled with the Holy Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and playing to the Lord in our hearts, you know, uh, I know for most of us charismatics, uh, this is something that we see uh, very real and very evident in our lives. I don't know about you, uh, but uh, you know, every so often, and maybe uh, more op a lot more often than not, you know, I, I, I would wake up in the morning with uh, a song in my head, you know, a religious song in my head, or I would, um, I, as I'm doing things uh, in, in, uh, during the day, uh, in, in my work or wherever I happen to be, I would just, uh, you know, uh, I, I, a particular uh, a religious song or hymn, 
uh, uh, or a religious song that's based on the psalm would kind of like just pop up in my head. And, uh, you know, I would feel comforted uh, as a result of that and really feel uh, in, in, in union with, with the Lord uh, during, during that moment. Uh, so the, the, uh, the Bible uh, actually uh, describes this as happening uh, to uh, uh, many, many people. Uh, many personages uh, in, the, in the Bible, and I don't know uh, how many of you actually have this experience as well. You know, I'm sure there are a lot of you who are experiencing this. And uh, like I said, it is a, a wonderful sign of the Holy Spirit uh, uh, at work uh, in us, in our lives, um, when, when, when this particular experience uh, happens to us. You know, like just a religious song, all of us are uh, popping up uh, in, uh, in our heads. You know, the Psalms uh, are filled with references to song music and praise. Uh, and and uh, as, as a matter of fact, the very last uh, uh, phrase uh, in the Psalm says, let everything uh, that has breath praise the Lord, praise the Lord, which actually is the, uh, is the lyrics of, of many, many of the songs uh, that, we, uh, that we sing. Now, uh, and, and some of you might know about this already, and some of you might not be aware of it, but uh, I, I just want to let you know that Jesus did sing. Jesus sang with his, with his uh, apostles, okay? And you find uh, references of Jesus and his apostles and his disciples, I should say, uh, singing in Matthew uh, chapter 26, verse 30, and Mark chapter 14, verse 26. You know, and especially, uh, you know, as, as the Last Supper uh, is described, they, they did, they did uh, offer uh, praise and thanksgiving to the Lord in, in, in terms of song, you know. And I, I uh, like meetings on computer, okay, uh, for, one, for one reason. Uh, I, we can sing. You know, especially prayer meetings where there is singing that's involved and that we can sing and then um, uh, nobody hears me singing <laughs> because, you know, I'm muted and so I can sing out of tune or whatever or however I want to sing, <laughs> give praise to the Lord and not, and not really bother uh, anyone. Now, believers in the, in the early church, uh, we were thinking probably uh, were singing in their prayer. Uh, you know, as Paul and Silas definitely were singing as they were chained in the Philippian uh, dungeon, as we see uh, in, in, uh, in Acts uh, chapter 16, uh, verse 25. Uh, and, and, you know, uh, St. Paul uh, delineates uh, the importance of singing in his letter to Colossians. Uh, and he said, uh, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, as in all wisdom you teach and admonish one another, singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs and gratitude in your hearts to God. You know, uh, I, so singing is, is something that, uh, it, singing praises to God, I should say, is something that we uh, really uh, should that should make a part of our our prayer and our and our worship and of course as Catholics, uh, singing is there very much uh, a part uh, of of our worship and uh, so uh, when when you um, uh, attend attend mass of course now we're attending mass uh, largely uh, online or live stream and like I said. Uh, if you have not tried it before, uh, because you were kind of like embarrassed to sing at the top of your voice, and maybe not uh, so nicely that people will be will will, will be bothered, uh, this is your chance to kind of like lift up your voices to the Lord in song. And I assure you, the Lord is going to be is going to to appreciate it. Now, the the. Uh, <clears throat> The, the uh, uh, other, other exhortation as far as uh, 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 the, the passage uh, uh, from, from Ephesians uh, is that uh, uh, we give thanks always and everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to God our Father. Uh, so that's uh, uh, Ephesians uh, uh, ch chapter 5 of verse 20, uh, giving thanks always and everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ uh, to God the Father. And um, 
that is a, a very very good habit uh, to to uh, uh, to form. And like I said, you know, in this particular, uh, I, I quote those passages, uh, and those passages come after the exhort, uh, the, not the exhortation, uh, uh, the the uh, yes, the exhortation to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Because once we are filled with the Holy Spirit. The, uh, that, 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 this is what uh, happens to us. This is the reaction uh, that actually uh, comes out of us. Uh, I just mentioned uh, singing to you, and now I just want you to uh, give thanks always as, as uh, advised and as exhorted uh, by uh, us, as having been exhorted by, by uh, St. Paul, because uh, it, it is extremely important for us to always have a spirit of, of gratitude uh, to God our Father and to, to our Lord Jesus Christ. In uh, the uh, first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians, uh, we are told, uh, in all circumstances give thanks, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. And so thanksgiving, uh, as, as uh, we see in the scripture, as we are invited uh, in the scripture to do, as a result of being filled with the Holy Spirit, uh, is something that would be, that is of great uh, value to us. Uh, you know, uh, the, the, sometimes uh, uh, it's very easy for us to give thanks to God because things are going well in our lives. Uh, no problems, uh, but other times it is kind of like difficult. It's not even uh, possible uh, in our own strength uh, to give to give thanks to God because of what's uh, what's happening uh, in our lives. Now, the verse twenty of Ephesians five uh, that I have been uh, uh, drawing uh, uh, reflections from uh, for this particular uh, talk. Uh, Says to, says to us that uh, we should always uh, give thanks. In verse 20 of Ephesians 5, that uh, this passage from Ephesians that I have been drawing uh, I, from with regard to this particular re reflection, tells us to give thanks always and everything in the name of our Lord Jesus. There is a, uh, a similar passage uh, in First Thessalonians, uh, uh, chapter 5, verse 18, uh, that says, In all circumstances give thanks, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. It is so important for us uh, to always give thanks. But it's not always easy. It's easy to give thanks when everything is going well in our lives, uh, when there are no problems, and when everything we ask from God seems to be given to us. That's so easy to give thanks uh, to God for right, but sometimes it is not easy and it's not even possible for us uh, to give uh, thanks to God using just our, our very own strength. Because, you know, the Holy Spirit works and works and graciously during these this moments when we are not able to thank God as easily as, as we would like to. Uh, the Holy Spirit is always merciful and gracious and will give us uh, the ability if we but desire it the ability to, say, to, to give thanks to God so we can respond with thanksgiving no matter when, ble when, blessing, uh, when, when blessings or challenges uh, come. Uh, it, it is important to always uh, have a, 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 a thankful uh, attitude uh, towards, towards our Lord because our Lord has given us so much. Yes, things don't always work well, but I don't know about you, my own experiences, those moments when uh, the, the uh, uh, things are not going well are very temporary. They do not last a long time. And I really, really believe that if we do our best to overcome uh, this, this ro the roadblocks or whatever it is that's causing us uh, not to experience, uh, you know, what, what uh, uh, experiences that uh, will enable us to give thanks to God, if we push through, with the help of the Holy Spirit, we are going to be able to overcome what it is that is in front of us and eventually uh, give thanks and praise to God uh, once again. Uh, God may sometimes choose to bring trial or test into our lives unexpectedly, and we know that this happens because whenever God does that, He's trying to, to form us and to strengthen us 
in, in, into someone uh, that, that, that needs to be able to overcome uh, whatever uh, trials uh, that God is, is sending our way. Uh, the, 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 when, whenever this, this happens to us, we really need to just trust uh, in the Lord. It is very, very difficult, but we need to trust in the Lord and seek uh, the help of, of others and in our seeking uh, the help of others, we also turn to the Holy Spirit and ask the Holy Spirit to guide us so that people who can actually help us in whatever trouble we find ourselves in and we're trying to overcome, that those people will come and we will, and, and with their help, we are going to be able to um, get out of the bind that we find ourselves, uh, ourselves in. Now, you know, uh, many of you are, are familiar with uh, the, the prophet Jonah and how uh, Jonah um, uh, uh, actually um, had troubles uh, trying to uh, trying to uh, uh, evade uh, God and God's uh, wishes uh, for him. Now going back to Ephesians chapter 5 uh, verse 20 of that chapter uh, gives us a second virtue that results uh, to a believer being truly filled with the Holy Spirit and that uh, and, and being filled with the Holy Spirit leads to thankfulness uh, toward God. You know, uh, gratitude is uh, the greatest act of, of worship that we can uh, really render, render to God. Um, now, verse 20 of Ephesians chapter 5 gives us a second virtue that results uh, when a believer is truly filled with the Holy Spirit, and that virtue is the virtue of gratitude. Uh, our entire uh, worship as Catholics is uh, based on uh, this particular virtue. Uh, the Mass, for example, is uh, not for example, but I should say the Mass that we celebrate um, uh, on a regular basis that is uh, the, 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 the most important act of worship that we give to God is actually uh, I, uh, based on, on gratitude. Uh, you know, as many of you know, uh, the uh, other, other name that we give um, the Mass, uh, the sacrifice of the Mass, is Eucharist. And Eucharist uh, means, uh, it comes from a word that means uh, thanksgiving. So thanksgiving, thankfulness to God, is, is uh, something that uh, becomes a uh, part of, of uh, uh, a, a, a baptized Christian as a result of the Holy Spirit being in us. Now, the, the, uh, the expression of gratitude is, is uh, a blessed, uh, is, is something that we all need uh, to do, not just during Mass, uh, but every uh, single day of our lives and many times. Uh, during the day, turning to God and giving thanks to God for whatever it is. Uh, it would be good really for us uh, to be able to appreciate uh, things that happen in our lives on a daily basis that we can really attribute uh, to God's uh, providence and to God's uh, intervention and just uh, give thanks uh, to God uh, for that. Now, of course, uh, it's not always easy for us to give thanks because sometimes uh, things in our lives are just not are not going well, and so maybe it's not maybe it's not just not easy, but even impossible uh, for us uh, to give thanks using just using our own strength. Uh, now, during those moments, it, it is important for us to really have uh, people around us uh, that can help us uh, see, despite everything that's go that's going on, things that we can continue to give thanks uh, to God for, like you know our our, our lives like those people uh, if someone is helping you uh, get over a, a, a particular really really sad or or um, difficult uh, situation now having those people around it is something uh, that we need to be able to thank God for and uh, you know it, it, it the, the it, Jonah uh, the prophet Jonah uh, is is one of those uh, people in scripture that we can look to when we find ourselves in, situ in, in situations that we are in a bind, you know, he was swallowed by, by a whale. Uh, but despite uh, uh, that uh, particular uh, experience, you know, Jonah uh, is still praying to the Lord. Um, and and uh, this is, uh, this is uh, Jonah's prayer to the Lord uh, during, that, during that time. Uh, 
The water surged around me up to my neck, he said. The deep enveloped me. Sea would wreck around my head. When, but when I became faint, I remember the Lord. My prayer came to you in your holy temple. Those who worship worthless idols abandon their hope for mercy. But I, with thankful voice, will sacrifice to you what I have vowed I will pay. Deliverance is from the Lord. And then, as a result of that prayer from, from, uh, from Jonah, uh, the whale spit Jonah out and he was able to continue on living uh, his life. God honored Jonah's prayer right, uh, to, uh, right out of the fish. And uh, we may never, be, we may never be uh, tried like Jonah was ever tried. Uh, but we need to remember the example of Jonah that if we respond with true thanks to the Lord in the midst of really tough times, uh, God will fill us with the Holy Spirit will fill us uh, with His with, with His presence and lead us out of the predicament that we find uh, ourselves in. Now, the uh, uh, for us. Uh, 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 Catholics, uh, uh, as we reflect on the, the filling of the Holy Spirit that we actually have the opportunity uh, to experience, you know, uh, constantly uh, in our lives, we it would be good for us to reflect on uh, what we can do at this point of time in our lives uh, to allow that filling of the Holy Spirit uh, to happen uh, to happen to us. Uh, as uh, Catholic Christians, we already have a lot of tools and a lot of, of uh, things available to us uh, to make that uh, uh, filling up uh, of the Holy Spirit of ourselves uh, happen. Uh, I already mentioned to you uh, the sacraments that, uh, that are available to us, especially the sacrament of, of, of the Eucharist. And then, of course, uh, there's the sacrament of reconciliation uh, or penance as uh, uh, as, as, if, as it is officially uh, identified uh, in the catechism, catechism of the church. Now there is the the uh, uh, the prayers uh, that we are able to say either individually or 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 um, as part of a group. And I know uh, you know as as uh, members of the couple for couples for Christ. Uh, you have the opportunity to, to be with other people, uh, to pray with people, and to have uh, those people pray for you and your intentions, and for you to pray for them uh, and, and, and their intentions. And of course, as, as Catholic Christians, you know, good works is very, very much a part of our tradition, uh, something that we are constantly encouraged to do, because uh, uh, doing good works and, and performing good acts uh, for the benefit uh, and, and welfare uh, of the people around us, and not just the people immediately around us, uh, but the entire world, you know, the entire communities in which we live, and the world uh, as a whole. I, I uh, being involved in, in such kind uh, of, of, of works uh, helps us. It helps us in, in the Holy Spirit uh, continuing to grow in us. And like I said at the beginning, you know, for uh, I described, I should say, in the beginning, for that receptacle of grace, uh, the, res the receptacle of grace, uh, and the, ho ho the Holy Spirit is is uh, otherwise known, uh, not not just otherwise known, but is uh, belongs in the category of uncreated grace. It is grace, not created uh, by God, but grace that becomes available to us when we do uh, these things, uh, when we do good acts uh, to to to, uh, to help others. There are so many uh, things that are already available to us as Catholic Christians that are part of our tradition. Uh, the, the main effect of which is to in increase the amount of grace, uh, and the, in other words, the amount and, and, and the, the, the power of the Holy Spirit uh, that is in our lives. We always need to remember the Holy Spirit is already in us. And our firm belief is as Catholic Christians, uh, who received the Holy Spirit on the day of our baptism. Uh, there is no way we can lose uh, this Holy Spirit unless, of course, uh, we, 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 we reject the Holy Spirit in, in, in a formal and really extreme way, which I'm not even going to go uh, get into right now because the Holy Spirit is just so powerful and it's so present in us 
and it will never uh, it will it will be extremely difficult for for us uh, to lose the holy to, to lose the Holy Spirit. It will be there, uh, but the, the we need to be able to uh, 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 activate, uh, if I may describe it as such, uh, the Holy Spirit in us, the power of the Holy Spirit in us, uh, so that our lives will be better and the lives of all those around us uh, will be better as well. And like I said, we have the sacraments uh, to help us do that. The Eucharist, uh, once again, I repeat, uh, whenever we receive the Eucharist, uh, the grace that is available to us, uh, it, it, it becomes greater every single time we receive the Eucharist, and we are going to be moved to, to act uh, in, in order to help others. And what we need to do is just respond to the prompting uh, that we feel inside our hearts as to how we can share uh, this grace and, and, and this um, uh, help uh, that the Holy Spirit is motiva motivating us uh, to share uh, with others uh, around us. As Catholic Christians, we have a tremendous uh, tradition uh, that, that is uh, available to us, that we can uh, uh, draw from, uh, that we can benefit from, and that many, many other people can benefit from uh, as well. And these, these traditions uh, that we have as, as Catholics uh, become very, very uh, real, very active, and very powerful, and very useful in our, in our midst uh, right now, uh, in the here and now, because of the power and the action of the Holy Spirit that continues to be with us, guiding us, and directing us. Uh, during this time of, of uh, the pandemic, uh, I know many people are um, uh, discouraged, of course, uh, uh, and that, that is uh, normal, that is natural for us to feel us because at this time we are not able to do what we used to be able to do. Even the way that we pray uh, is kind of like limited. Uh, I know many of us feel like uh, there is something just, you know, clobbering us or just uh, uh, preventing us from expressing uh, our, ourselves as Catholic Christians, you know, in the same way that, that we did before. But remember that the Holy Spirit continues to be with us and the Holy Spirit will continue to empower us and move us in the direction that we need to move so that we can continue to give thanks and praise uh, to God uh, in, in, uh, in, our, in our Lord uh, Jesus Christ. The uh, topic for this particular um, uh, presentation or reflection really is uh, how, to, how to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit uh, so that we can uh, do uh, God's will. We need to keep working on our relationship with the Holy Spirit uh, as we try to discern God's will in our lives. Um, there are many things as Catholics that, uh, like I said, uh, we are uh, encouraged and exhorted uh, to do. Uh, like I said, good works, uh, performing good works is very, very much a part of our, our tradition uh, because you know, performing, for, performing good works deepens our relationship with God. It helps us uh, 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 deepen not just our relationship with God, but with the, our, our relationship with our community uh, that really are, are dependent on, on, in many ways uh, on us. Uh, so that they also can uh, find their way uh, to heaven, uh, to eternal life. Uh, but it is very important for us uh, to, to continue to ask the Holy Spirit to lead us on the right path. And uh, in, in, the, in the Catholic uh, tradition, uh, one of the ways that, uh, or some of the ways, because there, that I'm going to be uh, sharing that with you right now, uh, that we are asked to um, uh, work uh, uh, in our in, in, in our under our our uh, uh, Catholic faith uh, tradition uh, to evangelize people uh, to bring uh, Christ's love to others uh, but most especially also for us uh, to reach uh, uh, our goal of uh, enjoying eternal life in heaven uh, we are we are exhorted to to uh, do the acts uh, of spiritual and corporal, corporal works uh, of mercy. And I just want you, uh, you know, as, as, we, as I try to uh, conclude uh, this particular reflection, for you to, to uh, think about this. Uh, because like I said, 
uh, these acts of spiritual and corporal works of mercy actually help uh, help us uh, stay in relationship with, with Holy Spirit and uh, through uh, the performance of these acts and the guidance of the Holy Spirit we are going to be able to discern what God's will for us is in the here and the now and the place that we that we live in uh, at the time uh, that we happen to be living there and so these are the corporal works of mercy just uh, and you can find this in many, many other uh, other uh, other places, you know, on the computer. I just want to mention this to you uh, as I end uh, this talk, so you will once again be reminded of how we can actually uh, deepen uh, our relationship with the Holy Spirit through these acts, and at the same time, uh, help us in discerning what is God's will for us in the world as far as how we are going to be with uh, it, it relate with uh, the people around us and also uh, with God and the Holy Spirit uh, themselves. So the four pillar works of mercy are feed the hungry, give drink to the thirsty, give alms to the poor, shelter the homeless, visit the sick, visit the imprisoned, and bury the dead. Something for us to think about. How is God calling me to be involved in this act, especially during this time of the pandemic? Uh, when there seems to be so much need uh, around us. Because like I said, as we perform these acts, our relationship with the Holy Spirit deep deepens and we find out even more clearly what God's will for us is and how God wants us to act in this world, in the here and now. And then the spiritual works of mercy, these are, some, these are things that we can do uh, as we pray and as we think of others, is instruct the ignorant, uh, counsel uh, the doubtful, admonish the sinners, uh, forgive injuries, comfort the sorrowful, bear wrongs patiently, and pray for the living and the dead. Like I said, you could find uh, this uh, acts, this list of acts of spiritual and corporal works of mercy, uh, and reflect on them. And hopefully, in reflecting on them and asking the Holy Spirit to guide you as to what to do as you learn more about them. You will be led to a deeper relationship with the Holy Spirit and the people around you and know what it is that God's will for you is in this life. We thank you for staying online, brothers and sisters. To our dear Bishop Alex Aklan, we thank you for sharing with us how the Holy Spirit is really interested with us in molding us to a better person or to a better Christian to the extent of controlling our actions and moving us until God's image and likeness permeates in our whole being. Our free journey may never be easy, but the Holy Spirit is always ready anytime, anywhere, 24-7 to help us endure and overcome our current trials and any challenges that may come our way. As Bishop Alex said, face each day and any situation with a thankful attitude and a grateful heart and entrust everything to God and seek help of the Holy Spirit. With that, brothers and sisters, let us close this gathering with a prayer and put ourselves in the holy presence of God, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear Lord, we thank you for blessing all of us. We ask and pray that may your Holy Spirit continue to work in us, to teach us your ways, to help us and guide us all, as we live each day, especially in this time of uncertainties. And may our current situation now may lead us to a deeper relationship with you, dear God. And all of this, Heavenly Father, we ask and pray in the mighty and holy name of your Son, Jesus Christ, together with the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever, with the powerful intercession of Mama Mary. Amen. And all glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good night.
and God bless everyone. Beyond the horizon